we started the foundation in 2008 as a way for our company to give back. This is our eighth project, six projects in Africa. So this is our sixth time here. There's a huge need for clean water. There's a huge need for water in general. Lots of sick people in this part of the world because of the contaminated water that they drink. So what we do is we harvest the rainwater, we purify it, and we pump it so villagers, schools can have access to clean water. This is a great help. A lot of times they have to purchase the water or purify it themselves, and it takes a ton of time and a ton of resources away from the schools. So it's a huge gift to the school and the community to have access to clean water right on their campus. The water here that we're diverting into a rainwater harvesting system is mainly because because of the need for a runoff. They have a problem with their runoff, so they just had an abundance of water because they have just a gigantic school and a ton of roofs, and all the water now is gonna be diverted into the rainwater harvesting system, and they will be able to reuse that water for different purposes around the campus and the school instead of just having it run off into the fields. So we started this five years ago, and all the brick buildings, we do these ourselves. We have our own construction company. You have to be very careful in Uganda. You can buy artificial anything in Uganda, including cement, and we have done it. This is a very corrupt society, and one of our goals is to have this school and then put a school in Kampala and raise up young people to be champions for Christ to get rid of the corruption in this country. It'll take generations, and I won't be here to see it, but that's our prayer. Jack, oh, that's what do we got going on? It's awesome. So this is our excavation. They pre-dug oh, it for us, beautiful. which is terrific, because yeah. it saves us a lot of work. Yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape today. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so we just showed up. They did an awesome job of digging this hole. It's just uh, now we got to fine tune things a little bit because it's a little bit out of level. We got to make sure everything's pitching the right way towards the vaults so they can get the ultimate usage out of this storage tank. So right now we're putting string lines all down through here. We're going to make sure that we get all the water pitching this way because over here in this corner is where the vaults and the pump suction is going to have to go. So we got to make sure all that stuff works right. So to piggyback off what Alan was saying, we've got to make sure that all the water that we're storing inside this excavation, which is going to have liner and be full of aqua blocks, has a little bit of pitch coming back to where the pump vaults are located so that this way we're utilizing every ounce of water that's going to be stored inside here. So we're collecting all the rainwater off of the surrounding buildings. We want to make sure they have access to all that to use on the property here. going the long way we'll go across the width yes sorry yes go across the width excavation should be approximately 26 feet I see some uh, some mathing going on down on this pallet here yeah so what has to happen now is we have to figure out the alignment and configuration of all these blocks we've got a thousand aqua blocks going in here which is going to store 32 thousand gallons of water so that's that's a lot of water storage and we've got a big excavation that wasn't dug by us so now we've got to make sure things are squared up because if we start installing this and it's not squared up, we can get to the other side and find that we have not enough room to put all the blocks in. So we're just going through all our calculations now to figure out exactly what it is we need. And then from there, we can do our finish work. Right now we are ready. All of the ground is level, so we're literally ready to put down the underlayment, then the liner, then a thousand aqua blocks, and then that whole thing is gonna be finished on the top and we can just cover it back over with dirt.
Our liner is in. That was a Herculean effort right there by everybody. Underneath that, we've got a heavy rock pad that's gonna protect the liner from anything that might be underneath it that we didn't catch. On top of this, we're gonna do another layer of fabric just to sandwich that liner in between two protective layers so that there's no trouble down the road. Next order of business, we're going to be installing our pump vaults along with a thousand aqua blocks. This is what a thousand aqua blocks looks like. The purpose of the aqua blocks is a uh, vessel so that when we put them inside the liner, the liner doesn't collapse in. So the idea is, is each one of these blocks will hold about 32 gallons of water. They are uh, rated to be in the ground. They hold 30 pounds per square inch. So they're very strong. Uh, we've done these uh, in a lot of different situations. This situation here is specifically just for rainwater capture, but we do use them in, in many other applications. Great explanation, Chuck. Now let's get them in the hole. remarkable how fast things are progressing today. The entire reservoir is in. All the blocks are in. We're at the point now where we're gonna start backfilling. So to be quite honest, we've never been this far along on day one. We've got an awesome group of volunteers and something we also never have, a machine. Usually we're doing these jobs in foreign countries and it's all by hand. We're fortunate enough here that we've got a loader that's gonna help us do the backfilling. I'm expecting by the end of the day to have most of this backfilled, which leaves tomorrow pretty easy. See how it goes. So I know this doesn't look like much, but right here where we have um, all that soil is, there's actually a thousand aqua blocks under there, which is gonna harvest all the water off the roofs. This school is gonna house about 700 to 750 kids. And with the clean drinking water, now the kids don't have to be out gathering water for their families. It's gonna actually increase their health and uh, give them more time to actually be in school and learn. This is all getting hooked up into um, their system. So right now that's an overflow pipe in case this overflows in here. And then they're actually gonna have a feeder pipe come in that's coming off the gutters. And then the small black pipe that's actually gonna go into a tank so they can purify the water. So we're climbing up here, we've got this two inch pipe feed. I have to attach this thing to this ladder up to the tower so that we can test the pump pressure and make sure that we've got enough water for us to get the water up here into the tanks. From here the water goes down, it's gonna run underground, it's gonna weave in between all these buildings, go down into there where they do all the cooking. It's gonna be a gravity feed from here to there and then they have all the desedimentation and filtration equipment already set up down there. Once we finished with the rain exchange system installation, we were invited to do a presentation before members of the community and dignitaries to explain exactly how it's going to impact the school and the children that go there, which was followed by celebration, including dancing and singing by some of the children that actually went to the school there. As we're in the middle of the presentation, the skies open up, it starts to rain, which means our system is being charged with water. That's a good sign. That means they're gonna be closer to having a usable system that will feed this facility to provide water for these people. What a great feeling to be part of this group to come out here and do so much good for such a needy cause. The world's most precious commodity is water, right? Nobody can live without it. Nothing, nothing will, will survive without it. So to be able to uh, create something that they'll be able to sustain themselves and have this uh, valuable drinking water just to, just to survive is just amazing. We are at a ranch run by Master Care's ministry. They teach animal husbandry here. 
So even though this is a polluted water source, people still walk miles with yes. these five gallon cans, children, women, to collect this dirty water and bring it home to drink. Dr. Yes. Santago says as long as this is the main water source of Bethlehem, all he can do is try to keep people alive. Really, really gripping stuff here. This is real world. This is the hospital along with a surgical center built by Charles and his ministry. It, it's, it's hard to even put it into words. I mean, it's sobering to witness this firsthand. You see this stuff on TV and you hear the stories, but to actually witness it and experience it, it's, it's, it's hard to explain.